Welcome to the Six Miles to Supper podcast. I'm your host, Kayla Cox, and I've lost over 80 pounds with intermittent fasting six days a week, eating whatever I wanted at my meals, taking a cheat day every Sunday, and walking six miles a day. And I'm here to help you on your weight loss journey. In today's episode, we're going to talk about reasons you're stuck on the weight loss journey. You know, I have lots of experience getting stuck uh, when it comes to weight loss, you know, especially like in 2014, after I I had my I've had enough moment, I stayed stuck for about a year before I even weighed myself. And even past that, it took another year before I even really got serious with the plan. And it's crazy to me, looking back in hindsight, thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I basically spun my wheels for two years almost before I really started making progress. So my hope is that by sharing uh, these different places where you can get stuck, uh, that you'll learn from my mistakes and, and you won't have to take years before you see the same kind of progress. So the first and most common one is analysis paralysis. And this is where I was really for the first about two years. uh, I was constantly researching. I was researching, 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 never really doing anything, especially that first year. It was just like constant research mode, never actually doing much. There were things here and there, but basically never, ever, ever taking consistent action. And in 2015, there was a lot of the the more of the same. I I was researching and, you know, sometimes I would kind of take a little bit of action, but then I'd doubt myself and then I'd stop and I'd research some more. and, And there was just this constant loop of long stretches of inaction. So like if you're nodding and thinking, yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now. I mean, because it's very common. You might be listening to lots of podcasts. You might be watching lots of YouTube videos, reading lots of articles about intermittent fasting and weight loss and the, the best ways to do it. But you're never actually doing the thing. And if that's you right now, stop everything you're doing and write down a plan. You know enough right now to write a plan. Anything that you think might work just write it down, make it very, very simple, very, very short in, in like 10 seconds, be able to explain what you do and then just start implementing it. Even if the plan that you first form is horrible, you'll learn something from it, but don't just sit there in an action. The second reason you're stuck is because you're afraid. And this one is kind of difficult to to understand that this is what's going on. Uh, it takes a lot of self-awareness. But, um, you know, when I was first starting out on the weight loss journey, uh, I was afraid. I was really afraid. Actually, I was afraid that uh, my marriage would change, uh, that my friendships would change. You know, like if if you right now uh, are overweight and your friends are overweight, you might be afraid that when you're not overweight anymore, you won't have those same friends. And that can be a, a scary kind of thought. Uh, It's very uncomfortable to think of the idea that you may uh, need to get a different set of friends or you may have to uh, change some things. You know, I can remember being very afraid that for some reason, uh, you you know, my my weight loss might mess up my marriage. Like I I thought that I would become vain or or that it would just kind of uh, mess me up in some way. But, you know, I can I can tell you from my own experience that my marriage only got better, like a lot better uh, as the weight loss journey went along. And there are lots of other fears that you may be feeling, but ultimately, uh, when you get down to it, the only way to get rid of fear is to take action. Action cures fear. That's straight from David Schwartz in The Magic of Thinking Big. And it's true. The only way to get over your fear is to take action against it. Now, one thing that can really keep you stuck in the beginning before you really start losing any weight is this feeling of overwhelm. Maybe you've got just this big number of, you know, number of pounds that you need to lose and it's staring you right in your face and it's just intimidating. You know, if you've got like over 50 pounds to lose, that can feel like a lot. And uh, I remember feeling very overwhelmed at the idea of trying to lose 60 pounds or more. But the thing that has really helped me and it helps a lot of people is to chunk it. So in other words, chunk it into like five pound increments and focus on just that five pound chunk uh, when you're at it. And I would take it a step further when you're looking at, okay, what, what's my next goal? Look at just the next pound. So for example, if you are currently 350 pounds, then just focus on the first five pound chunk, just trying to get down to 345. And I would say even, even go, go more zoomed in than that. Just focus on seeing that next lowest number show up on the scale. So if you're at 350, just look for 
349 point something to show up on the scale. And then once you get down to 349 point something, say, okay, now I'm just looking for 348 point something to show up on the scale. And that's exactly the type of mentality I had. And it really helped me because that next pound always seems so attainable. It's just when we build it up in our heads and think, oh, 50, oh, 80, oh, 100 pounds, that it seems insurmountable. But you know, what can happen is maybe you do have a plan. Maybe you've written your, your plan down and, and you're taking a little bit of action every day, but you're not being very consistent. And when you're not consistent, you're going to be spinning your wheels because the weight will not come off unless you're taking consistent effort. For some reason, we get it in our head that we have to hate the plan uh, that's going to help us lose weight because that's the only way you can uh, really lose weight is by doing things that are really difficult and uh, and eating foods that you really hate and doing exercise that you really hate. But if you make yourself miserable like that, you're just not going to be able to stick with it over the long term because look, nobody likes to be miserable. So the cure for that, if you find yourself hating your plan, uh, just make your plan easy. Make it something that you enjoy. But you know, if you look at your plan and you say, hey, it's actually a pretty easy plan. Why, why am I not being consistent on this? It might just be that you don't actually want to lose weight. You know, a lot of us kind of feel like we should lose weight. You know, oh, my my husband wants me to lose weight or, uh, you know, my friends think I should lose weight or, you know, somebody made a comment about my weight. But if you're not actually wanting to lose weight, uh, then you're setting yourself up for just a lot of frustration. When your why is really deep and you have a big burning desire to do uh, the thing and to lose the weight, the consistency will come. Although another factor here is if you are an impatient person, so maybe you have a really deep why, but you're also at the same time very impatient, and this was me for sure, uh, especially back in 2015, uh, you are likely not trying the thing long enough to even see if it'll work. So then you're just quitting and trying a different plan and a different plan. Um, So instead of doing all that, just remain consistent with one plan for at least six weeks before you make any changes. Another thing that can keep you stuck is not believing that you can do this. Uh, because if you if you don't really believe you can do this, you'll prove yourself right every single time. And if you're wondering right now, like, can I do this? Can I really lose weight? I'm here to tell you, yes, you absolutely can. And if you're still having trouble and you just can't take my word for it, go out there right now and search for people who have done what you're trying to do. Be as specific as you can. What, it, However old you are, however many kids you've had, and type however many pounds you need to lose and put that in the search engine and pull up some success stories and read how they did it. I can pretty much guarantee you that you'll be able to find someone just like you who has done the thing that you're wanting to do. Now, here's an interesting thing that can happen. A lot of people get stuck towards the end of the journey. So they're, you know, approaching their goal weight. And this is something uh, that is really interesting because you would think like, oh, well, once you start to lose weight and and you're approaching the goal weight, it just gets easier and easier. But in fact, I've found that a lot of times for people, it gets harder and harder and harder. A common thing that happens is people keep like pushing their goal weight down further and further. So they start out saying, OK, I'm going to stop at 150. And then they say, yeah, you know, I'm going to push it down to 145. And then they are approaching 145. And they're like, eh, no, I'm going to push it down to 140. Then that becomes really frustrating because you don't really ever have a clear end goal in sight. And that can just start to mentally feel like you're stuck, even though you are still making progress, um, because in the back of your mind, you're probably thinking, when am I ever going to be done with this? But there's uh, this interesting kind of phenomenon I've seen where there's like this mythical last 10 pounds that they've really got to lose, you know, um, and, I, and, and, I, and I can say this from experience because I, I started to see this kind of behavior in myself uh, back at the end of 2016 when I decided to maintain the first time. Uh, I started to see like that I was sort of afraid to start maintaining uh, because there were still lots of things uh, that I really didn't want to face yet. I started to see like, oh, well, if I'm done with this weight loss thing, like there's other things that maybe I'm going to have to start uh, working on that are going to be a lot more c- uncomfortable and I don't really want to have to deal with that. So instead, let's just, you know, lose some more weight. But I decided, you know, I'm not going to do that to myself. I'm going to hang out where I am right now uh, at at this certain weight, and I am going to start working on those things. Uh, You know, like one thing that I wanted to work on was my body image, uh, because I was starting to see like, oh, 
one thing that I thought would get solved was uh, that like, as I got down to a lower body weight, like I would just suddenly love my body, uh, which was not true. Like it was still uh, very much the same kind of attitude that I had about my body, which was not positive, by the way. And another thing that happened was I thought, well, my body's not perfect. (laughs) Like, I thought it was going to look a lot different, but there were things about my body that were still very much the same as when, you know, I was obese, you know, I had fat on my stomach and uh, I had stretch marks uh, and I had cellulite. And I was like, huh, uh, these are all things that I still have. And so I, I saw that, you know, th- that it was tempting to say, well, I just need to lose 10 more pounds. But what I finally understood was, you know, it's actually not about that. Uh, there's always going to be stretch marks. First of all, I'm probably always going to have without plastic surgery, I'm going to have at least, um, you know, some, some loose skin from this, uh, pretty significant weight loss. Um, I started to see like, um, there's always going to be flaws, you know, hearing stories of like bodybuilders who have basically zero body fat and, and to hear how critical they were of their own bodies, uh, was kind of a wake up call for me. I started to see like, if I don't get this piece of the puzzle straightened out, I'm never going to be happy with my weight. And I'm just, I'm always going to be on this quest to lose 10 more pounds. And so I stopped and I, I hung out at that weight for about a year before I even lost any more. And I'm really glad that I did that, by the way, um, because it gave me a chance to really, uh, become a lot more positive about my body and, uh, and to get a better perspective on why or why not to, to lose more weight. Now, if you find yourself really honestly, you say, I really want to lose these last 10 pounds and um, and you have been really consistent with your plan uh, for, for a long stretch of time, let's say six or 12 weeks and it's just not moving, uh, then that's going to require that you make a change. Um, you're probably going to have to cut down on your portion sizes and you may need to increase your physical activity level. Um, and uh, so it basically comes down to, are you willing to do that? And what can happen is sometimes we're not willing to do that, but we also at the same time want to lose those last 10 pounds. But ultimately you have to decide which one is it. Now, there is a mindset thing that can happen, and it, and it can po- cause problems uh, in every phase of the weight loss journey, you know, either, either before you get started or in the middle of it or towards the end, and that's the victim mentality. Uh, so what that looks like, practically speaking, is that you blame your weight gain or your lack of weight loss on everybody else. So, you know, and this was me (laughs) back in uh, 2014, uh, especially when I was having my, I've had enough moment, I was blaming everybody for my weight gain. You know, uh, the media, my kids, uh, society at large, you know, uh, the fast food companies, it was all their fault. But you know what? Change only happened when I looked in the mirror and I said, you're the problem. You're also the solution, by the way, but, you know, I had to get it around in my head that I was the one that was responsible for my weight gain, that I was responsible for every bite of food that I had put into my mouth. Every pound that I had gained was a direct result of my actions. And that's a hard thing to admit to yourself. Uh, But, you know, some magic starts to happen when you when you when you really own that, because then you can say, oh, well, my actions got me into this. My actions can get me out. So ultimately, if you are feeling stuck right now on the weight loss journey, just know that that's totally normal, first of all, and that there are always ways to overcome it, that you can continue to make progress. Uh, Sometimes it just takes uh, changing your mindset a little bit, and sometimes it just means taking action. Really, that's usually the most common thing is there's just some action that needs to be taken. And if you do that, you'll get right back on track. So thank you for joining me in this episode, and I'll see you in the next one. You're sick and tired of being overweight. You're working hard to lose and the scale refuses to budge. You're done with dieting. You just want to eat like everybody else. When you hire me as your intermittent fasting coach, we'll tackle the issues that are standing between you and the life you want. If you're unsure about whether one-on-one coaching is right for you, click on the link in the show notes and schedule your free 30-minute consultation. I look forward to working with you.